Hey YouTube family, it's your girl Mrs. Rains. I'm back with another video. I wanted to pick back up on the sermon notes that I have been sharing this past year and I wanted to get back started with it because currently we are going through the book of James and I wanted to kind of jump in and share some insights from this past Sunday's sermon. And this sermon came from James chapter 5 verses 13 through 18. If you have your Bible, please follow along. If not, I'll go ahead and share with you the scriptures that were mentioned. So right here, you can see how it starts out. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. If anyone among you is sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make a sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will not, I'm sorry, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. He goes on to say that Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly and it would, that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Um, so this section of scripture really is concentrating on four areas of how you should approach life as a believer. Uh, the four areas or seasons in life that we all will encounter include suffering, success, sickness, and sin. So um, one thing to point out here is that what James is showing us is that everybody's going to go through these seasons. So if anyone is telling you as a Christian that you will not suffer, that's just not reality. Um, all of us are going to suffer at some point, whether it be um, uh, physical suffering, whether it be financial suffering, we're all going to suffer at some point. Uh, we'll all have success at some point where we feel like things are going great. We'll all feel sickness uh, or infirmity. And then all of us have to deal with sin, obviously, on this side of heaven. So... Right here, James has given us imperatives to each season and how we should approach these things biblically. So um, the first area of suffering, um, there's some reference points here. Psalm 25, 7, Psalm 107, uh, verse 6, and 2 Corinthians 6, 4. I'm not going to go through and read those, but um, by all means, check those out when you get a chance. Um, the idea here is that God has a purpose even in our suffering and that God is working things out for us on our behalf. Um, the thing about it is in suffering, we can only see the circumstance, but we can't see past the circumstance. And obviously, you know, God is in control of even that. Um, I'm reminded of Job where, you know, the Lord was still in control of all those circumstances. Um, the enemy had to ask God for permission to afflict Job um, physically, his sickness, financially by taking away his entire, um, his, his crops and his animals. And then um, also by taking away his family. So a lot of things that Job had to deal with, God was in control of those circumstances. And he also was in control of those circumstances later in Job's life when he gave him back more than he had to begin with. And he had that success. So it's important to kind of pay attention to that. The second area of success, um, it kind of gives you the idea of cheer or good fortune and hope, um, what we consider good fortune. And in this area of life, you should be praising God. So um, in the first area of suffering, you should be praying. And then in the area of success, you should be praising, declaring what God has done for you and proclaiming about his blessings that he's allowed. Um, he should be part of your testimony. You should be grateful and thankful. Um, and then our pastor kind of went ahead and talked about the um, ways you can tell a Christian is walking in the spirit. They are, you know, they'll be filled with songs, thanks, and they will be submissive to the Holy Spirit. So, you know, definitely those are some ideas that um, definitely are biblical and kind of give you an idea of whether someone is walking with the Spirit or not. The third point is sickness. Um, in sickness, we should be prayerful first, but also it mentions calling for elders. Um, that's going to be pastors, that's going to be ministry leaders, um, people that you consider strong in the faith. Um, they'll be intercessory, they will be intercessory prayer for you. They'll petition in the name of the Lord on your behalf. And when you see that the scripture mentions the Lord raising up people, um, even those who are sick and in, infirmed, 
it doesn't necessarily mean they'll be raised up in this lifetime. So when we do go on to glory, there'll be no sickness, there'll be no disease, there'll be no infection, there'll be no pain. So you'll be raised up. Um, the, it's a matter of time. Is it going to be in this life or is it going to be in glory? So keep that in mind. Um, our pastor also mentioned um, a scripture reference um, where you're told by his stripes we are healed. Healing sometimes is a physical healing, sometimes it's a spiritual healing, and then sometimes it's not till glory. So it's important to keep those things in mind. The last area is sin. Um, so we are to pray, praise, and petition. And then the next area is confession. So in sin, you should confess, seek forgiveness. Psalm 51 is a written confession of an adulterous, murderous king and King David. He sinfully um, kind of held on to things for a year before he was able to confess and repent and be held accountable. Um, it's important also to pay attention to James 5.17 where James talks about Elijah who is a man just like us and about he, him giving the example of him praying for rain, uh, praying for a cessation of rain and it not raining for three and a half years and then praying for rain in which he did, um, rain did come down. And it wasn't that Elijah was a super spiritual person. Um, it wasn't that he had some extreme closeness to God that allowed him to pray down rain, but he knew God's promises from the book of Deuteronomy and he recognized what God said and he knew God's will and he sincerely sought God's will and said, you know what, Lord, you said this in Deuteronomy, so I'm praying that this happens. And I think praying God's will according to his word is what found Elijah success in that. Um, confession is important because you can confess to the Lord, but you also need to confess to someone around you. And a lot of times, some things that are happening in your life are a result of sin you're holding on to. And sometimes the sin you're holding on to, the Lord is trying to get your attention. So it's really important to not only confess these things to um, the Lord, but then publicly confess them to a trusted spiritual leader because, you know, these things need to be dealt with in our lives. So that is a quick overview of this week's message. Um, please also leave comments in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you and your take. And again, the scripture reference here, this is James chapter five, and I'm reading from verses 13 on through verse 18. Um, verse 19 wasn't included, but I'll go ahead and Read that one for you, my brothers and sisters, if any one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover a multitude of sins. So if you are suffering in these areas or if you are um, finding joy in these areas, so that means suffering, success, sickness, and sin, if any of these areas are currently your season, by all means, talk to believers and your fellowship, those who are close to you. We're meant to be together sharpening one another. We are not meant to be in the desert alone. Um, although that was something that Christ had to endure, we don't have to endure that. We, we share each other's burdens. So I encourage you to show love by somebody and um, I encourage you to be the one that somebody is able to love on because a lot of times we don't let people in. So I hope all of you are doing well and enjoying yourself this fine day, and I hope to see you again on the next edition of Sermon Notes. Talk to you soon.